welcome along to episode five of Everywhere We Go, Kiddy Are Massive. It's a Kidderminster Harriers fans podcast with me, Nick Hatton. Delighted to say that our guest tonight is none other than Harriers number 17, Ethan Fremantle, leading the line this season in great form as well. So fingers crossed this continues and his form can lead to good form and good wins and good points on the board and that all important promotion come the end of the season. Fingers crossed. So Ethan, welcome to the podcast. Hi, mate. Thank you for having me tonight. How are you, first of all? Yeah, I'm all good, thank you, mate. Um, we've always had a tough couple of weeks, a lot of away days. Um, yeah. Good set of re- results recently, so I'm positive um, in football, away from football. I'm, um, I'm on a day off currently, so I'm just enjoying the rest. Yeah, and the eye looks all right. I saw, saw, um, I saw the footage. Yeah. It looks a lot better than it, did, than it did on Saturday. Yeah, I'm still very ugly, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so the lads have been saying, but yeah, the eye's making a, a, a full recovery, I should say. It's um, it's almost back to normal. So um, fingers crossed, the good luck's returning sometime soon. Yeah, well, it didn't stop you scoring on Saturday, did it? No, it didn't. No, um, before the match, uh, the gaffer said like. Don't you dare think about talking out of any headers because of that eye. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't talk out of any headers. Um, just got stuck in. It was a tough FA Cup game. Um, probably similar to some of last season's early games with like Ware, Bedfont, Sporting Calsa, where um, a tough away days, you kind of get no disrespect to them, but brought down to their level or their way of football. And in the end, I think the most important thing is the result rather than the performance. Yeah. Uh, right, let's get cracking then. First question as ever on this uh, podcast is, uh, what does Kidderminster Harriers mean to you? Um, well, I joined here when I was 18. So, you know, it's been a massive part of my life for the last four years um, in terms of football and in terms of just me as a person, really. I've lived here for the last two or three years as well. So not to sound too corny, but to, to me at the minute, it's kind of everything, you know, I, I live, live, eat and breathe football. Um, it's obviously a massive passion, hobby. I love the, the town. I love the club. I love the people I go to work with every day. So, yeah, to me at the minute, it, it's um, it's a big part of my life. Yeah, yeah. so like, life is good at the club so far. You, you must be really happy with how things have started this season as well. Yeah, of course, you know, it's been a tough couple of years. Um Obviously, I haven't really been penned in as the main striker as such um, up until this year. Um, I've had a couple of years where I've kind of been the backup, um, been called upon now and then, but never really had a proper stint as a um, as the number nine, so you put it. Um, so, yeah, it, it's going really well for me this season, but we're still only 12 games in, so there's a long way to go. And... Um, I just need to keep up the good form, I think, and keep producing uh, the performances that the fans and the, the management want to see and just keep going with it, really, yeah. Yeah, I sense there's a bit of, bit of frustration there in, in that in that sort of element, if you like, that you haven't maybe had that run until now. But again, I guess on the other side of things is, is potentially, you know, the way you have come up through the club, through the academy, that sort of thing. It's a case of biding your time, I suppose, to a degree. Yeah, nail on the head there, mate, to be fair. it's uh, It has been biding my time and, you know, Morgs last season led the line tremendously well. Um, it was going to be tough for me to get um, any minutes, so I've got minutes here and there. But it, it's been a tough process and it's an ongoing process, really, you know, just because things are going well this week, next week, who knows what's around the corner. So I'm just trying to stay positive, keep with it, keep scoring goals, hopefully, and um, see where it leads me. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about uh, time on the pitch uh, a little bit later on and, and your journey to the club. But uh, tell us about your sort of early life in football. How did you how did you find your way to Harriers? Um, so it all started for me. I'm a Coventry lad, born and bred. So it started for me at a local team called Christ the King, only a, a small Sunday league team. It started off for me there. I then progressed onto a, a team. That was, well, Christ King was actually in the bottom division of, of uh, under sevens football, whatever it was at the time. It was called the Green League. So it was like the bogey league. So then I progressed on to Counter Court, which were like the, the the top team in Coventry, I should say, one of the top one or two teams. Um, and then from there, I had trials with clubs such as Coventry, um, Leicester, Wolves, Birmingham, all unsuccessful. They all kind of said, no, he's not good enough, um, which then took me to Walsall at the age of 16. Um, I spent two years with Warsaw, did my apprenticeship there. Um, 
and it was a very up and down spell again, you know, I was kind of navigating through early adulthood as well as full-time football. Um, and I don't think that was a, a great time for me. I wasn't the most mature off the field. And I think on the field, you could see that or probably wasn't taking it as seriously as what I should have been. So when it comes to the decision of getting a professional contract and not the age of 18, I was, uh, I was let go, uh, which at the time it was very tough for me to take. I couldn't understand why I couldn't really see anything other than football. Um, after that, I took many months out of the game, kind of knocked on the head. I fell out of love with the game. I think the, um, the setback kind of did me harm at the time. Um, but looking back now, I think it only made me stronger because it was only, like I say, I took probably four or five minutes out of the game and that's when um, an opportunity with the Harriers 21s come up. Um, and it was only with the, the 21s, it was kind of like ran alongside a, a, a university degree which somehow I managed to complete as well. I'm still <laughs> shocked I managed to do that because I've never been the brightest. I'm sure that will tell you. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so it was going really well for me at Kidderminster Harriers at the time. Um, I remember my first ever appearance was um, at Ketter in a way. Um, the gaff for them was John Pemberton. I think it was a day Chamber got a hat-trick and we won 5-3. So I, I broke through into the first team then and only had probably that one appear appearance Played about 10 seconds, then didn't get a call up again for like four or five months. And I was thinking, what have I done so bad in that 10 seconds that's, <laughs> um, that's costed that? So, so yeah, it, it was a quiet then for a bit. And then finally got another breakthrough at Altringham away, which was like a, a Pennicut and Chamber out injured. It was like freak injuries almost. And I'd only been training with, with the first team for a couple of days in that week when I got called upon then. I had a great, great performance then. Probably my best ever in a Harrier shirt. I don't want to admit it, but yeah, I did very well. And then since then, I've kind of hit the ground running. Took the um, took the game by the scruff of the neck, and and found myself where I am today. What what snapped you out of uh, of, of falling out of love with, with football? Then was it like a, a light bulb moment? Was it family? What what got you through it? Um, yeah, I wouldn't say so much of a, of a light bulb moment as such. I think it was uh, act, um accumulation of a few things really I think my dad and my brother were always pushing me towards football they obviously knew it was something that I was good at but my um, my, my judgment was clouded at the time because I'd been through the rejection I didn't want to know be involved with football anymore um, I think it was like almost like my dad was like you've had months doing nothing you've got to pull your finger out you've got to go and try something at least with the, the football the kid the Harriers route you get a backup of education too so in the end I, I kind of got persuaded by you know, the football side, but also the university side and what that can bring after. So I suppose it was it was like a mixture of, of both of, both those things. Um, and then when I was at Harriers, the 21s, I, that's when I fell in love with football again. You know, that's when I was playing week in, week out, doing very well for the 21s, which obviously led to my call up and introduction to the first team. So, yeah, I suppose it was it was really kind of a, like you said before, you know, a call up from the family. Um and then push me through that time, and then also the club and um, and what football meant to me when I when I joined this club. Yeah, and you, you mentioned getting getting that opportunity with, with the first team. That 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 sort of first training session with the first team is it like almost like the first day at school? Was a bit a bit of nerves? Yeah, I was cacking my pants. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, definitely the first session with the first team. It would have been when they had some very good players there you know we had players like Reese Williams on loan from Liverpool and I think I was up against him and I thought yesterday I was probably out on the student night in Worcester and now <laughs> playing against the, uh, a Liverpool centre-half it was a bit of a wow what's going on here but yeah like you say my first day um, I don't remember it now but I remember my first couple of weeks I was probably ringing my dad saying oh I'm buzzing training with the first team but like anything it's, it's experience you know the more I went up there the more confident and at ease I felt the more I felt part of the uh, team, and so yeah, it was uh, it was definitely a daunting couple of weeks at first, probably. Yeah, um, and welcoming a welcoming bunch, I assume. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I don't want to dig anyone out, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was a welcoming bunch. I think that's definitely got better over the last couple of years. But I think we've always had a strong knit team there. Um, I think that was shown last year through like the FA Cup run through where we finished in the league um, and this year I believe it's only got stronger you know the Gaffer and Jim although they um, appoint great footballers they also appoint great people um, and um, so yeah 
and being given those opportunities is, is that sort of the the perfect way to to get your focus as, as as sharp as possible you know you you take that opportunity to join the harriers on the 21s the education side of things and you are being noticed you are getting those opportunities at first team level whereas before you'd said maybe your focus and your attitude wasn't quite right did, yeah. it, did it feel like last chance saloon almost to a degree yeah kind of almost at the time um definitely at the time yeah but i was only 18 so at the time i probably felt like that but now i look back now i realize i've got plenty of time left i had plenty of time then um but certainly yeah there was an element of right it hasn't worked well at warsaw i'm 18 it's time for me to grow up this opportunity has come along where i can give it one last proper crack at it and since then i've, I've never looked back really and I, I enjoy it most days at football obviously everyone has their down days but yeah, it's been a really great time for me in my career and, and hopefully it's um, it'll be a long career and I can look back at these as happy days where it all started. Yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, that that, that first season where, where, where you break through, um, as you say, 10 seconds in your, in your debut in your debut match, it, obviously those minutes increased and your, and your performances got better and better. I mean, talk about bad luck, COVID hits and it curtails what was going to be, what looked like being a good season for you. Yeah, of course. Um, COVID obviously come about and kind of, knocked everyone for six, bamboozled a lot of us. We were kind of thinking, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen next? Now there was games called off. Um, even when we got through the COVID season, there were still games being called off here and there. And I guess that did, did kind of uh, stunt my growth a bit because the best way to learn for me personally at football is by getting experience out there on the actual, on the pitch. So I suppose like a lot of games being called off, it probably did stunt my growth a little bit, but it only made me hungrier, really, to prove myself when the time did arise. Yeah, because obviously that season was brought to a halt. The, the next season, I think we got to about February, didn't we? And then then that was called yeah. off as well. Null and void, I think it was declared in the end. So it was such a long wait, wasn't it, from February right through to August again, wasn't it, until we the, the sort of that season um, started again. So how how did you, you, you fill your time? You mentioned you, you live, breathe, live and breathe football. How, how difficult a period was that then? To have what a lot of people, you know, cling on to, you know, football is a is a massive part of everybody's life. So how difficult was that for someone who is, you know, who is a footballer? It's their job. Yeah, for sure. It was definitely difficult. Um, I think if you ask most footballers who are used to being around a group of lads all day, the camaraderie, you know, used to being physically active all day, it was definitely a tough time. And it was a time that almost just seemed to get longer and longer. And there was a lot of uncertainty. So for me, it was kind of just filling my days with, other, other things for example we got like a, a new little puppy in lockdown a uh, little lockdown dog I know loads of people also did the same <laughs> thing just to uh, almost drive you out of insanity so there was there was lots of like physical stuff as well I'd be out on my bike a lot you know training um family zoom zoom quizzes <laughs> to get you through the week um but yeah it was definitely a, t a tough time like I imagine it was for most but I just tried to stay physically fit stay positive and, and just try to um look for better days mm. Yeah, and from what I've heard, the club were, were were very good with all the players during that period as well. Oh yeah, for sure they was. They looked out for us. You know, there was um, there was workouts sent out, um, home workouts, runs on the streets, just little things really that I think when you're so accustomed to being active all day every day, then it just gets taken away from you. It, it keeps you on your toes and keeps you um, driven and keeps like a goal in mind. You know, to think well, I'm still in contact with the club, so I've still got the football side of things. There will football will be back soon. This isn't the end of it. Um, so yeah, it did definitely did keep me driven, the thought of football during lockdown. Yeah, and presumably you would have been out of contract because I th from what I can remember, you sort of, your, your deals have been year on year, haven't they? So were you, yeah. you was your future uncertain as well at that point? Um, yeah, I believe it was um, many moons ago now, but yeah, I believe it probably was uncertain back then, whether about if I was going to have another season or not. And also our like you, like you mentioned previously, like there wasn't any football on that time. So how am I going to prove myself to be worthy of a, of a chance? Um, but, you know, the club have been excellent with me throughout, uh, very patient with me, um, understanding, like, like you mentioned before, we've got a great management there. Um, so, yeah, the club have always done right by me. So it's only right that I um, do right by them. Yeah. Um, and finally, we got to play, or you got to play, I should say, in, in front of crowds. It was, a, I think it was a Man United game, wasn't it? That that pre-season friendly, which was sort of the big homecoming to a degree, wasn't it? I think it's three and a half thousand. You're at home against the Manchester United. Yes, not the first 11, but they've got so much talent, haven't they, amongst their youth ranks and under 23s, etc. 
that must have been a special night, must it? Firstly, because of the opposition that you played, but probably the most importantly, you're playing in front of a crowd, you're playing in front of home fans, and presumably playing in front of family as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was it was a great occasion, like you say. Um, my family as well, um, a bunch of Glory supporters, but are all United <laughs> fans, probably just because of how good they were at the time. Probably not any more United fans without they currently are. But <clears throat> yeah, just to know to hear you're playing against Man United, it's like it's like a bit of a buzz, regardless of who they put out. Um, my family, friends, you know, you tell them you're playing against Man United, it's a massive occasion. And then come down to the actual night, I believe I come on in the second half and got an assist for Sam Austin to make it 2-2. Um, just a fluke header to be honest. I don't think I meant for it to go to him. I meant, think I meant to clear it off the pitch, but it landed like at his feet. So yeah, that was a massive occasion. It was kind of like a um, a realisation check to see where I'm going to be playing week in, week out and in front of the fan fan base. And, you know, it was like a real, wow, this this is almost, you get a feeling and a sense of like belonging. Like, this is what I was made for. This is what I'm, I'm here to do. This is what it, it's been about since I was kicking a ball when I was probably four or five years of age. Yeah, and that, that match was sort of the start of the, of the reconnect between the players and the fans. It felt like, I've spoken to Russ about this, about how it was, you know, this is what everybody decided that, we, that you were going to do post-match, was do the sort of the three-quarter sort of lap of honour, isn't it? Yeah. And, and that's where it all connected, really. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I joined probably at the back end towards a, a bit of a rotten spell for the club. Um, I mean, I, went, I know I went to matches before where there was massive disconnect between the, the fans and the players and even between the club, you know, the people at the top of the club and the bottom of the club, it just seemed like it had been turned upside down and it probably wasn't a nice place to work every day. And, and yeah, it wasn't the most pleasant of clubs. I think fast forward, what, three years now and the club's completely turned around and that's under the, obviously the new chairman um, and also through the gaffer and Jim as well, who have, who have really, um, brought forward just the most basic things really um, in and around the club you know it's it's a matter of like professionalism respect for everyone including your opponents um, so right now yeah I, I think the club's in a lot better place there's a lot more of a connection between the fans and the players and like you mentioned there the little half lap at the end I think I'm the one that milks it the most I think I'll stay out there <laughs> along with me and Hemo probably make the most of it but it, it's great to think that that um, his club, uh, we're part of bringing his club back, back to where it should be. Yeah, and w- uh, were you thinking at that point about how big an opportunity this was for you? Because I know Amari Morgan-Smith was going to be out for a while, wasn't he, at the, the start of that campaign because he'd had his suspension for the Chester incident and also he'd been sent off a bit later on as well. So I think he missed probably first eight games potentially. Yeah, it was around that, yeah. How, how were you feeling about that? Because you would have felt Potentially, you you've got eight games to, to to keep your place in the starting lineup. Yeah, for sure. It was um, still probably only twenty twenty one there, um, and I was probably quite excited at the thought, but also quite nervous as well. You know, I hadn't played loads and loads of first team football, more just cameo appearances here and there. So the thought that I was going to be the main man for the first eight games, whatever it was, was daunting, exciting. Um, and I, I just couldn't wait to get underway. And I think that showed up. The first game that season was York away. And I, I played, um, in, well, personally, I thought I played really well. So, yeah, it was it was a great time for me personally to get that experience and get in and around it and uh, to get that taste of first team football. And I think I got dropped straight away <laughs> <laughs> after the eight games. But no, I, I did well. I, I had a couple of goals. I played some great performances. But... I think last season when that all started, it was I knew I had it in me, but it was more a matter of consistency. And I think this year you've you've the fans yourself have probably seen that I've been more consistent with my performances rather than there being a good performance here and a good performance there. It's kind of been back backing up good performances, if that makes sense. Yeah. What did Russ have to say then to you? Obviously, as you mentioned. Not, I don't think it's not being dropped, is it? It's not being dropped. You'll see it like that, I suppose you will. But you've got a player like Amari Morgan Smith, who you know, with the the caliber of the, that he is. What, what did Russ say to you in terms of, you know, time to step aside? What did he say? Um, I don't think you put it that bluntly. No, no. <laughs> he, um, I must give it to the gaffer. I think at the time his man management skills was brilliant with me. It was, 
it wasn't almost a drop in. It was almost put across as like fresh up personnel in the starting eleven. Um, obviously, I, I I'd done well for the team. You're in a good position, um, and I've never felt excluded from the group. It's always been a part of like you are one of the strikers. Um, you, although Morgus is coming in now to play, like that's no, not an excuse for you to drop off or to feel disheartened. It's an excuse for you to kick on. You know, it's um, it's football. If I was breaking through at 18 or if I was 30 or whatever age, there's always going to be competition there. And I, I think it was more of him putting across to me that I need to keep work hard, things that haven't been going well, keep working at it. And the basics that you are good at, keep on with that as well. And how was your relationship with Morgs at that, at that point? Obviously, you, you were the you were in the starting berth. He must have been like a caged animal, wouldn't he? Counting down until his suspension yeah, was sure. lifted. For sure. Um, I mean, I take my hat off to Morgs. Then he was um, obviously understood that you know, it was eight games he was out and putting his ego to one side and kind of thinking for the benefit of the team, he was very helpful for me, you know, if there was things in the game that he saw that he probably didn't approve of, like from one striker to another, he'd offer me um, advice. Um, very forthcoming if I went to went to him for advice. So, so yeah, I think that just highlights really the the strength and the the how close knit the group is really you know there's obviously competitiveness in football but never it, it, never in a bitter way or anything like that it's more a fact that we all, all want the best for the team and how, how do we um, get that yeah and you find the back of the net in that in that period was that your first goal for us in first team I can't quite remember whether it was that season no, or the season before was, it was a season before it was Gloucester away, the yeah. head up. Yes. I think that was the last game and then COVID. I wasn't I wasn't sure whether that counted because it obviously that, that was null and void, wasn't it? As well. You're counting yeah. that clearly, that's in your tally. I'm still, I'm still counting <laughs> that. You can't take that away from me. <laughs> um to, 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 to get that, that form though, to find the form and to you know be be a challenger up top, that must be a huge little uplifting and confidence boosting for you though, or even though you know Morgs has stepped in. Yeah, I think um, as a striker, you always judge on how many goals you score. So uh, obviously, I hadn't scored enough goals in the time, which wasn't ideal for me. But um, but yeah, so I think, like I said, as a striker, you judge on how many goals you score. I think I'm getting a lot more this season, which is better. But like last year was probably I had good performances, but couldn't quite cap them off with a goal. Um, and obviously. From a fan's point of view, it was an absolutely incredible season. When when did you start to sense that that it was going to be something special? Um, for me personally, I think it was probably the FA Cup run. So I think growing up, you know, it's um, the FA Cup is massive. Growing up, you know, I'm a Coventry City fan, so all everyone, all anyone ever talks about in Coventry when it comes to the FA Cup is the 1987 Cup win. And that's kind of our uh, what put us on the map as such. So for me, the FA Cup's always been like a, a massive event, especially for us smaller teams who can really put our names out there um, on the big screen. So I think for me, it was probably getting into the first round. Um, and then after that, there was, I remember watching the highlights on Match of the Day. And I remember I got a penalty against Grimsby, which we we won that game and obviously Hemo scored the pen. So I remember watching myself on on match today thinking, oh my God. And they were slagging <laughs> me off about diving. I was fuming. <laughs> I remember thinking that wasn't a dive. It obviously it was, but <laughs> oh definite penalty. Definite penalty in my in my book. Um what what was but what was behind that success then? Because it felt like as, as you mentioned Russ bringing sort of simple things into the into the group and the respect and everything else. It seemed from the outside looking in that that team spirit and the bond between the squad was was as strong as I can remember anyway. Yeah, definitely, for sure. I think um, going back a few years, the, the team, although it was always got on well, maybe disjointed, different fractions, you know, um, different reasons for people being there. I think last year there was kind of a collective mindset that, right, this club is a, a great club for the level and we need to get the club back to where it was. I think it was kind of a, a mixture of, you know, us all wanting the best for ourselves and each other and the club. Um, it was a very tight knit group, um, and I think we respected the level a lot more. To be honest, I mean, on the pitch rather than going to places like Kettering and you know, real tough places to play football, we wouldn't go there and try and play a nice brand of football. We'd respect the level, and um, we'd be <laughs> experienced in our approach to games, and we'd just 
just go and, and, and kind of play the best game we could on the given scenarios, on the given pitches. And one of the big catalysts for that brilliant season was obviously the former Sam Austin, who it was like a rebirth, wasn't it, of, for mm-hmm. Sam Austin? Because obviously, while you would have been in the under-21s and under-23s, you would have known about his time in the, in the first team where he was left back, right back, wing back, not never playing in the position that he was given by Russ at the start of that season. It was crazy. Yeah, it was. It was crazy, to be fair. When I first broke on, he was a right back and he was like a... Um, you know, he was no disrespect to Sammy because look at him now, but he's kind of your standard right back, you know, seven out of, at least seven out of ten every week. Uh, not known for goals or assists, but yeah. always the hardest workout, always going to throw himself about, always a good performance. Now, I remember when we um, <clears throat> started pre season, we got called in, and one of the first team sheets that were given out, Sam Austin was number 10. And I was thinking, like, is the gaffer lost it here or what? He's a right back. <laughs> he's a right back. Um, but yeah, that goes to show what I know about football because look at him now as a number ten for us. He was he was he was brilliant as an attacking player for us. He was great and obviously um, well deserved move from at the end of it. Yeah, I think the Notts County fans are loving him already. Um, that that cup run, then obviously you mentioned getting the penalty against Grimsby. Halifax was next up. Then it was who was after Halifax? Why should I remember after Halifax? Reading. Reading. Yeah, it was Reading. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah Halifax was second round, wasn't it? So Reading in the third yeah. round. Um, that, that Reading game again was was another special, special night for us, I think. Yeah, massive. Absolutely um, massive. I remember remember for that game, I think I was called up to do an interview beforehand on BBC um, Football Focus. My, all my family were watching back home. I remember coming out the interview to loads of text. Um, it was you and Caleb, wasn't it? I remember. Me, the, the me and room. Caleb, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember I didn't get told about the interview, so I've come in and some really old tired trainers and everyone was messaging me like you've got to get some new trainers lad them ones are tired um so yeah but going back to the, the actual game I remember I've come on with about 10 minutes left and I don't know if you remember there was about five ten minutes extra time so I think it's about 12 gone, it's 12 wasn't was, it, I think. Yeah, was yeah. it yeah, yeah 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 so it had gone from me playing like just 10 minutes at the end to an extra 12 minutes extra time um but that was a special day for me I you know that's kind of one of them moments that in West Ham that you almost never forget you're playing against a championship team you're in National League North and, and you, you beat them against all odds you know the, the joint killers as we were labelled last year it was uh, that was a special day um, for everyone involved to be honest yeah yeah, I, I, I'm quite sad after watching the highlights back. The amount of times I've watched the West Ham highlights and just paused it after Alex Don't do it to yourself. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't go any further than, this, than the second half. But um, <laughs> I, I often wonder with that Reading game, whether obviously Amari Sterling had that brilliant effort in that first half, which the goalkeeper pulled off a brilliant save. I, I, sometimes I wonder if, if that had gone in, whether, whether we would have gone on to win that game. I think going behind just before half time probably helped us, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. It's... Um... Like you said previously, like that team last year, we were really close knit and had a, a great like never say never attitude. And I think going a goal down in front of our home fans, knowing that we'd come out kicking towards them, um, it sounds silly, but we never felt like we were going to lose that game, or we never felt like we were out of out of the race. We always felt like we were in the monks there and we were going to compete with a championship team. Um, but I think kicking towards our own end and you know, when Sam Austin made it 1-1, those little moments in games kind of spur you on and, and, and lead you to where where you're meant to be. And people will probably only see the goal and see Sammy's shot, which sort of the goalkeeper made a bit of a hash shot. But if you go back two and a half minutes, three minutes, it was all us, wasn't it? It was like 35, 40 passes, I think, before, before Sammy yeah. scored. Yeah, it was. It was... Um, if you, if you were watching from the sidelines and you had no clue who the two teams were, you certainly wouldn't have pitched us like four or five leagues apart or 80 positions in the English National League, whatever it was. It was a very close-fought game and I think we fully deserved to take the win. Um, and then obviously <clears throat> obviously the next day was was the draw. West Ham at home, where, where were you when that was made? I was actually at the, um, at the pub at the Harriers. I was at the um, Harriers Arms next door to the stadium. Um, there's a good crowd in there. I remember there's a few of us in there. We were watching it, and I was gutted at first. I saw we were at home, so I thought, oh no! Obviously, in the <laughs> FA Cup, you want that big away day, yeah. you know, Coventry or Owen Man U or Liverpool. So we were at home, and I thought, oh, who's this going to be to? And then 
we got West Ham and it was kind of like jubilation again. Everyone was really excited and buzzing and thinking, let's go again. And I think one of the older members um, in, in the pub must have mentioned about the West Ham game that had happened 20 years previously and that yeah. we kind of owed them some revenge. So, yeah, it was kind of, it was all built up very well. And it was, um, you know, to play into a Premier League team was kind of like, wow, it's a massive experience. Yeah. I think Coventry away would only be big for you. No offence. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody else will be celebrating well, if we yeah. got Coventry away. Um, and we, I think we had six games, didn't we, between the Reading uh, game and the West Ham game. And I think there was maybe a suggestion or maybe a, a thought, maybe our form would dip on the back of that, or the West Ham game being a distraction. And it was it was complete opposite to that. Yeah, it was a complete opposite. I think um, as a team, um, going from like, the, the gaffer to, to the players, it was we were so professional about everything and we were so like, we kind of compartmentalised different between league games and FA Cup games. And it was kind of like, you don't even focus on the league game or the FA Cup game if it was the next game, if you know what I mean. So there was never a thought of like, oh, we've got Farsley at home tonight, but we still think about the West Ham. We were all kind of, um, we were all kind of focused on one goal. So it would be like the next game, it would be Farsley and then it would be, Brackley away, for example, then it would be straight back to, all right, the next one's the FA Cup. Now let's focus on that. We never really got too carried away with ourselves. And But there was one downside, obviously, was was you picking up an injury in that run. Yeah, um, Hereford away it was. It was good. And now even to talk about it, it makes me angry. But I suppose it's just football, isn't it? It was um, 20 minutes in against Hereford away. And I just felt my hamstring pull. It was a cold night. It, the game got delayed by 15 minutes. It was just a concoction. You thought something's going to go here. So my hamstring went after 20. That unfortunately ruled me out for the West Ham game after, which is obviously gutting. But, you know, just to be a part of that whole experience was was massive for me. And hopefully there's another cup run soon that I can be part of and we, we get a similar draw to that. Yeah, when, when I was thinking of questions to ask you, actually, I don't know whether if you are going to miss a game like that, would you have rather have picked up an injury maybe in the week or so before that because you knew you had a week to sort of get your head around the fact you were going to miss that game rather than not being selected? Yeah, for sure, definitely. Because like you say, I think it happened about 10 days or two weeks before and I was always, it didn't feel like a very severe hamstring pull. It just felt like a twinge and I was just fighting to get back in the part of it. You know, it was kind of the week, 10 days before, you still don't know if you're in or out of the team. So I was doing all I could to get physically fit, to get my hamstring right. Um, I think we tested it out about two or three days before I tried running. I could just feel it pulling. And from that moment then, I just knew that I'm not going to be a part of, of this day. Um, but nevertheless, I try and look at the positives on these things and just to be a part of it and in and around the change room and, and that day as a whole, it was a great experience. Yeah, I was going to say, you've got to sort of get your head right and, and enjoy it, haven't you? Because, you know, it was 28 years, wasn't it, since we played West Ham in the FA Cup and got had any sort of game of that sort of sort of size. So you, mm -hmm. as much as it's disappointing for you from a from a personal point of view, you've got to embrace it, haven't you, as well? Yeah, for sure. It, is, um, it was um, it was an amazing experience, you know, just to be a part of it, to be in and around the ground. You know, you, you usually come to Agra and great stadium it is it hasn't got all the cameras and all the the energy and atmosphere around it and all the people and you know they even throw up a little a little beer truck whatever it was like <laughs> everything was just like everything was crazy so just to be a part of it was was special in itself um talk me through the moment that, that, that Alex scored then I know that it was you and Cliff wasn't it there were sort of the two big names who, who were missing from, from that from that um from that game talk us through then when, when Alex sort of volleyed in um, just crazy, wasn't it? You know, just to go one nil up to against West Ham, it was like, wow, this is like, is this going to happen? Like before the game, you all talk about belief, and we have belief in ourselves, but you also think like, okay, this may be one hurdle too far. This is a Premier League team who are bringing all their big boys to come and play against us, and you do have those doubts. So we went one nil up. It was just like scenes everywhere. You know, I think. I can still remember when it went in, like everyone around you was just completely buzzing. Me and Cliff were hugging for about five minutes after carrying on. Um, and then as the game went on, and it was like the 70th, 80th minute, it was kind of like, we're going to do it. We're actually going to do it. Um, 
and then we all know what happened after that so i won't talk too much about it <laughs> yeah a bit of a heartbreak a bit of a heartbreaker um obviously after that sort of form was indifferent wasn't it after that i don't know how much that that sort of the manner of that cup defeat sort of led to what happens for the rest of the season but ultimately we missed out in the in the playoffs in in the end how how, how tough was that to take on the back of what we'd achieved that season um for me um personally i think the toughest part of the season was accepting the fact that we hadn't been promoted. Um, of course, your West Ham is obviously a massive heartbreak and, and whatever, but the objective for us from the start, the main objective was to get promotion. So to miss out on, on the promotion was, that was gut wrenching. And um, I think we all felt that as well, to be fair. And I think, especially the boys who were here last season are all here to put that right. And, you know, we want to be in that league above. We want to get Kidderminster Harriers back to where it, it, it belongs. So it was very tough to take, especially in the manner we went out in. Um, but that's football, isn't it? And I suppose you got to not get too low on the lows and not get too high on the highs. Yeah, I was going to say, how, how long do you let that linger? Because obviously you've then got the summer, you've got a holiday to, you've got to enjoy your holidays, haven't you? You can't let, you can't let the disappointment of that overshadow what, what's important family time as well. Yeah, for sure. I think... I spoke about earlier getting released from Warsaw and, you know, at the time it's still raw and it still hurts, but over time you, you come to terms with it and you, you put a, pa- a plan in place where you're going to go from there. So we wasn't going to go into sulk about the fact we didn't get into the playoffs. Um, we wasn't going to hide from the fact either we didn't get promoted. So, you know, it's kind of, again, you come together at the start of this pre-season, you have a collective mindset that we want to get promoted. You know, we've brought in some great players um, some great characters into the team so there's no time to talk in football you screw your head back on and you um and you um prep right so it doesn't happen again yeah um obviously a lot of transition squad wise over over that summer as well we lost a, a, a few key players obviously you were offered a new deal as well was there any th- or what thought process did you go through in terms of signing it was it like an immediate yes or you've spoken earlier about maybe the, the frustration of not being the first choice number nine was that an element maybe that you had to think about as well or was it yeah I'm in I'm in yeah it was kind of like um a mixture of both really you know it was excitement you know it's a it's a great club for level there's not many bigger clubs from than Kidderminster Harriers so it was kind of yeah it was like I don't want another season of just being a second choice striker and not getting the minutes that I need to to progress and to um to get better as a player. Um, but ultimately, um, I, I have I have a great life um in Kidderminster. I have a, a great relationship with like the, the players, the staff, the club. So when the opportunity arose to sign here for another year, I just had to back my own belief in myself and just told myself that no, you will be you will be getting more appearances next season. You will be um, in the goals more. And f- when you're in that type of mindset, it's, it was quite easy for me to say yes and sign the new deal. Yeah. And, and as it happens, I mean, Amari injured in, in, in pre-season again as well. He, he's had quite a, quite a spell out and it's given you that opportunity again. But unlike, I think, unlike last season, when Amari was available, you, you kept your place. Yeah, for, for sure. Um, I've, had a, I've had a great start to the season. Um I've had a, well, I've had a good start to this season, but I've still got a lot more to give. You know, um, people seem really happy with where I am at the minute, but I know in my heart of hearts I'm not fully happy yet because I know I've got a lot more to offer. I've got a lot more goals and I, I can be scoring. So, yeah, I'm keeping holding my shirt at the minute, but you don't know what's around the corner. Like I said earlier, you know, I've got to keep doing the right things, not get carried away with the fact that I've had a, a good start to this season because it's only 12 games in because it's a long old season and it's um I'm going to be called upon a lot more than just just now yeah it, do you feel under more pressure this season um perhaps in in a sense yeah I do feel under more pressure now I am the the, the number 9 as as they say but I feel like with the game time that I've been um given recently especially over the last year or so I'm a lot more experienced now to handle that pressure you know I don't let don't let it ever get too much for me. I try and keep quite grounded. Um, and, and the pressure now is is different type of pressure now, but it's a pressure of I'm starting every week. I've got to perform. And that's a lot better pressure to perform under, under rather than, right, I've got to prove myself. I've got to prove myself. So 
I still do feel pressure, but it's um, it's a welcomed pressure. Yeah, yeah, and when you have uh, you might, well your assistant Jimmy actually saying, you know, you're a talisman. That was I think that was in his post match interview from, from from Saturday. How much notice do you take of that? Um, yeah, actually, that's very um, very nice of him to say that. You know, I've earned that that title, I suppose you could say. So, so yeah, it's it's coming from my boss in a sense. So it's a massive compliment, and um, and I just need to keep on being that talisman. I think. Um, let's let's talk about the goals that you have scored then in your in your Harriers career. Um, what do you have a favourite? It may not be the best, but do you have a favourite? Um, I think my favourite would be the Spennymore one this year, the half volley. Um, that would be my favourite, yeah, for a whole number of reasons. You know, I take a bit of stick sometimes for not having a left foot, but I think I proved <laughs> I was wrong there. Um, and also I had um, I had a lot of family there that day in, in that corner where I slid over to, including a newborn baby niece. So that goal was obviously special to me. Um, and then just for the style of the goal, I like the Farsi Celtic one last year where I got on the half turn and probably shown a lot of people something they didn't think that I could do. <laughs> Yeah, for the Farsi one I've got written down as my as my favourite of, uh, of yours. That, that spending more one as well. It's it's different, I think, to the goals that you score. You're probably not known for scoring from distance, I think. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I haven't scored many goals from distance yet for the Harriers. Hopefully, it'll be uh, something that I, I uh, add to my game or that you see more of. But yeah, the the, the edge of the box goal against many more was was a don't want to blow me own trumpet, but it was a great finish, great goal. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a great goal. Yeah. Yeah, and you can only score those kind of goals, can't you, with with the service that you get? Yeah, for sure. I've got, um, I think on the day it was Lowy, Nathan Lowe, who um, assisted that. He's been great for us. You know, there's a lot of, a um, lot more production in the team over the last 18 months, two years or so. I'm getting in a lot better passes into me and I'm also an experience finding myself in a lot better positions where I can take those shots on. Yeah, and obviously Nathan Lowe is one of the, the long, long line of injuries that we've got at the moment, isn't it? Um, I don't know how much, whether you do go on fans' message boards or not. I think one of the debates has been recently about whether this year's or this season's squad is better than last year's. I think it's hard for a fan to gauge at the moment purely because of the amount of injuries that we have got. But if you sort of listed who, who is out at the moment, they're all first teamers, aren't they? So not to put you on the spot, are we are we in a, in a stronger position squad-wise when everybody's fit than perhaps we were last season? Um. I mean, it's a great question and I suppose I could answer it, but the only right way to answer it would be at the end of the year when we see where we finish <laughs> up and, and what happens. So I'm not going to sit on the fence. I will say that um, last year we had a great team and squad and some great individuals. Um, but I believe this year we're, we're stronger as a team. And although we may have lost a couple of very um, talented individuals, I believe this team's um, more stronger as a unit. And I think we um, overcome um, problems a lot easier, a lot more experience. You know, the defence this year, I believe, is stronger. Um, so, yeah, I think this year's team, <coughs> injury-ridden at the minute, when we do start firing on all cylinders, like we have shown glimpses, RVG against Spennymore, I think the fans will be um, very happy with, uh, with the players we've got this year. Yeah, and I, I imagine as well, correct me if I'm wrong on this, that you must be really pleased for Tom Palmer as well because I assume again I could be wrong on this that you obviously he's come through the academy as well you would have you would have crossed paths during that academy so he's he's had to bide his time as well yeah brilliant it's it's great for Tom Palmer I mean I have a laugh and a joke with him that he's um he's been here longer than anyone you know he's been here for probably seven or eight years now um so for him now to see where he's at it obviously gives people like me belief and also the younger lads coming through belief um not to dive too much into him, but he obviously had a, a tough time here. You know, he's had a lot of uh, doubters. And I think this year, he's certainly proven they're wrong. I think he's been one of our, our, our best players this season. He's been great for us. Um, I think the loan spell last year at Russia, where he had that first team experience and those runner games, he played 50 games, whatever it was. And that's helped him a lot. And it's um, it's gave him uh, the tools and the skills to be our number one this season. Um, and just a word on the on the management duo as well. You touched on it earlier about sort of the what what Russ and Jimmy have brought in terms of the maybe the professionalism and the the respect element. Just just a few words on what on what they have done for you and what they've done for for the squad and maybe for the club as well and for for the fans too, I suppose. Um, 
Well, I'll start with probably myself. Um, for me, um, you know, they've they've gave me opportunities and they've trusted in me where maybe some of the managers might have have um, not trusted me. You know, they've gave me a lot of um, um, opportunities to present myself. They've been patient with me. They've um, they've looked out for me on and on the pitch and off the pitch. Um, so yeah, for me. My introduction to first team football, they've been they've been very good. They've been great gaffers, great people. I think around the club, they've um they've instilled a togetherness between the people who are on the pitch, the people who are off the pitch, you know, all over. And then for the for the town and 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 stuff, they've they've gave the um they've gave the fans and the, the people in the town a, a team they can be proud of and a team that they can um go and enjoy and watch every weekend you know before it was probably a bit glum going to watch the Harriers what's it going to be but I think their stint as my job has been a lot more happiness than sadness yeah and just finally to, to finish on you Ethan as well I mean hopes and ambitions going forward we, we sort of started this where you, where you spoke about falling out of love with the game this, this sort of spell of of game time and, and scoring goals what does this do in terms of maybe changing if at all what, what you want to do in the game what you want to achieve in the game um, I try and keep it looking day to day type things, but um, I suppose it just it gives me further belief to push on in my career and keep doing the right things and keep listening to the right people, um, take on the right advice, and just to enjoy football every day. Just you know, just to go out there, training matches, whatever, do your best, try your best, learn things, and. I think with that type of mindset, the doors open for themselves. You know, you, you, you get yourself into positions by just by doing the right things sometimes. Uh, last question or last last sort of um, sort of incident for you to, to is your chance to speak to the fans. I mean, if, if, have you got a message for them? They've obviously been been a great support for you over the time that you've been here so far. Um, probably just for myself. Just thank you for being so um, patient with me. I know it's probably been a bit of a process to get to where I am now and by, by no means finish but thank you for the for the patience thank you for the support for good times and bad um you know i see it all um and hopefully long may it continue because i i love being part of the team the club so i can't see myself in any of the shirt for a while yet that is brilliant news thank you so much ethan thank you for joining us uh, tonight um sorry for interrupting your champions league viewing <laughs> <laughs> very very sorry no, um fine, I, thank you for having from, me from my point of view i think if, Firstly, it's great to see you progress as you have as one of our own, if you like, coming through the academy. Secondly, it's great to see you getting goals to your name as well, which I think is great for everybody to see. And I think everybody is, is excited as well. You mentioned about potential and that you said there's a lot more to come from you. I think a lot of fans are excited about that as well. Yeah, no, definitely. Thank you for having me, mate. I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed our, our little talk and um, hopefully catch you at Agbar on Saturday.